In the last video, we created a functional state tree to open and close a door. We looked at different ways of structuring state trees. So here we had an individual state, which we gave two tasks to run on it. Whereas here, we created a state which had child states that ran the tasks. And here, for the door open, we looked at changing the type from the default state to a group state. So what is the difference between the two? If you hover over this state here, it will say that this state is a state containing tasks and child states because it is set to type state. We go to our door open, which is type group. When we hover over it, it says that this is a state containing just child states. In other words, it is a container for states which can run tasks. But the group itself, as you can see when you go across the details panel, cannot add any tasks to run on it. The way to think about it is that a group is for structure and organization, whereas a state is for function. In other words, if you want to create a container for child states, but you also want that state to run tasks, then you should set it as type state. If you only want to have a container that runs states with tasks, but you don't want the actual container to run any tasks, then you should set it as a group. This can then lead to a selection issue that you must consider. For instance, the closed door is a state, and as you can see from the icon, it will try to select its first child state because it has a selection behavior, select children in order, which is by default. Whereas a door open, which has a different icon here, does not have a selection behavior. And what we had to do was force a transition to the next child state we wanted to activate. However, as this is more for structure and organization, we perhaps shouldn't be selecting this as the next active state, but rather be selecting the child state we want it to move to. So from the open door, instead of saying transition to door open, which is a group, we should say transition to set open text, which is a state. In other words, it is part of the function of the tree, which means that we can remove this transition as it is no longer needed. And our open door state will transition on completion to the set open text state instead of the door open group, because this is more for sort of visual structure to make things clearer. That also helps you when you are debugging, as you do not choose a group state, which isn't part of the function of the tree. To make it clearer, we could just call this our door open group. By the same token, we could make a decision about the closed door, because if we wanted to put some tasks on it, we would leave it as a state. Perhaps we wanted to add a debug task. But if we just wanted to be more for structure, we would change this to a group as well. So we could change that to a group, call that the clo closed door group. And then from this transition, Instead of transitioning to the closed door group, we would transition to the first child state we wanted to activate, which is the set closing text. And that should then result in our tree still working the way it was. I would not be surprised if in future state tree updates, the ability to transition to a group is disabled, as it is more for structure and organization instead of being part of the functional aspect of the tree. But we can test to see if our tree still works with our new structure. So it's closed. We go closer. It says opening, now open. And then it transitions back to closing and closed. And that would continue to function as we have set it up. So the way to think about it is that groups are for structure and organization. In other words, they don't run any tasks and are not part of the function of the state tree's logic whereas states are functional and they can run tasks to be part of the transition logic. When you start off, you will probably choose state by default, and that is often the easiest thing to do. 
But as you progress further, you might make a decision to clarify what your type is. And you can always switch between the two as you need. That also means that you can maybe add an extra theme and call that group to make it more visually obvious that this is a group state rather than a normal state. And this just allows you to identify things more clearly as your trees become more complex. So I hope that helps with different ways of structuring your state tree to make it clearer to understand and to ensure that the logic is jumping from state to state without going to unnecessary parts of the tree, because that can complicate the debugging aspect of state trees.